Let's spend a few moments trying to clear up some of the confusion about what you should be doing in the BIM 360 document management interface, the web interface, versus what you should be doing in the Revit application. So we're looking at the document management interface here. You see a series of different files. These are actually all cloud Revit models. What we can and can't do in this interface has some limitations. So let's take a look at this. One thing you may be tempted to do within this interface is rename your files. Now I'm going to encourage you to think about the reason why you want to rename the file. If you're time stamping the file, that is you're just creating a new version of the file and you'd like the file name to reflect a new date or a new time, I'm going to encourage you not to rename the file. Just leave it with the same name and take advantage of the versioning that goes on within BIM 360. As you publish new versions, the new versions as well as the old versions are kept. So if you're just interested in uh, storing a copy from each different day or every week, you can do that just by publishing new versions to BIM 360 and even go through and compare those versions. The advantage of not changing the file names is that if you're using these models for model coordination, if the models keep the same name, they'll be understood as being the same model. So any work you've already done to classify clashes between this model and another model will be maintained and it'll roll forward into the new version. You won't have to kind of reevaluate those things. Whereas if you change the model name, okay, then you'll have to start over from scratch. So if you're going to be using model coordination especially, think about keeping the model names the same and just using the versioning to handle your time stamping. Now I'll distinguish that from wanting to change the name oh, because you're splitting off and creating a new version. You're creating some new geometry and it's not really a new version in time. It's really just a whole new kind of thought in your design process that you want to maintain separately. That's a good valid case for saving as and then creating a new file. But let's just talk about the very simple notion of just renaming a file and how you do it. For example, here, I have a file and for whatever reason I just don't like the name. The bad name no longer seems to fit the file. I want to change that. So can we do that? If I hover at the end of the file name, I'll get a menu that lets me rename the file. I can choose rename and I can just change that from bad name that no longer fits to just some new name. Again, don't do this arbitrarily because this will invalidate or make us recreate any work because it'll be considered to be a different model. But I'll choose that. Okay, it now has a new name. Let me go back over to Revit and we'll find it. Now you won't find it here under recent files because these are all referencing back to the old names. But what you can do is go to BIM 360. Let me go back out to those files. And here you'll find that better name. It's still considered to be a valid cloud model file, so it's going to open just fine. And as you continue to sync from here on out, it'll just have that new name instead. Naming can work okay. Let's go back over though and take a look at another operation people often want to do, and that's to copy files. Let's think about that. So for example, I have this architectural file. I might want to make a copy of that. This is a cloud Revit model. And if I want to copy that, I could say, okay, let me go ahead and copy going to want me to copy it to some folder. I'm going to put it in a slightly different folder. That file's been copied. You should know though that what we've just copied is the last published version of that file. So if any changes have been made to the Cloud Revit model that haven't been published, those aren't captured. Similarly, it's not actually the Cloud Revit model, it's just the published version of the model. So it doesn't have all the same attributes as a Cloud Revit model, and you're going to see we won't be able to open it that way. If I come on over to the folder where I copied it, you'll see there it is. It exists. It seems to look okay. Everything seems just fine. But if I go back to Revit again, and I go to BIM 360 to go back out to the folder where I copied that, and you'll see it doesn't show up here. Copying Cloud Revit models doesn't work in the BIM 360 interface. If you want to copy a Cloud Revit model to serve as the basis of a new thread in your design thinking and kind of fork it off as a new save as, here's what you got to do. So don't copy within the BIM 360 docs interface. Instead, do this. Go to the Cloud Revit model, the actual one. I'll open it up. Okay, there's the original, that's looking good. This is the Cloud Revit model. 
What I'm going to do is do a save as, and I'm just going to save it locally for a moment on my desktop. I'll say new concept because, again, this is a new thread that I'm going to sort of continue to um, illustrate an alternative concept. I'll save that away. Right now, I just have a local RVT file. What I can do, though, is with that local file open, I can say collaborate in the cloud. And now I can put that back up in the folder. Cloud Red Files, right there. It's going to have this name moving forward. So really, the only way to create, to initiate a new Cloud Revit model is by using this Collaborate tool within the Revit interface. So I'll say Initiate. It'll save it up to the cloud, and we'll have a new Cloud Revit model there when it gets done. So watch out for copying. That's one that often confuses people. It sort of uh, seems like you copy, but what you're copying is just the published version. You're not actually copying the Cloud Revit model. The only way to get that Cloud Revit model, again, is to download it to your local machine, then use the Collaborate tool to put it back up to BIM 360 Docs. Now we'll go back to that Cloud Revit models, and here comes my new concept model. I can go through and work with that. Similarly, it's very tempting to think about taking these files that are out here in the BIM 360 Docs interface and move them around because you want to organize things a little bit differently. So I, for example, want to put a subfolder in here. I'm going to call this Concept2. So your inclination may be to say, great, this is hanging around in here. I'm going to move one of these files into the Concept2 folder. So again, I could try over here. I'll say move, okay, and I'll move it into the Concept2 folder. Everything seems like, oh, maybe that'll work. It's hanging around over here in the Concept2 folder. Let's go back to Revit, though, and see how it actually panned out. We'll go out there. We'll oh, go to BIM 360. I'm going to go to my Cloud Revit Models. OK, there's Concept2. That actually seems like it worked. Let's go ahead and open it up. So it looks like moving actually is OK. So in the grand scheme of things, you can rename. That works. You can move a file, that works, but copying doesn't work. So if you want to copy, be sure to save as that file locally as a RVT file on your own computer, then reinitiate it using the Collaborate tool. So get under the Collaborate tab, use the Collaborate tool, which shows up here for a new file, and you can then uh, reinitiate it as a Cloud Revit model. It'll be available in the BIM 360 interface.